this is Texas Tiger Digs, and I guess I might as well get to the more boring portion of uh, my uh, comparison between the uh, the M6, M6 and the MX5. Uh, down here I have the uh, the uh, the M6. So I'm going to try a little uh, test, and I'm going to do just a pure sound comparison. I'm not going to check initially, that will be the second part, exactly what the VDI is that I'm going to be hitting here, uh, and when VDI dies. I'm just going to see how deep I have to go before the signal disappears. So uh, I'm going to go over to the, uh, over to the M6. Switching it on, and I'm going to turn the sensitivity all the way up. Okay, I can get to about 90, 98 or 100. I think I'm right on 100%. I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it pushed beyond 100%. There is room to do that, but uh, let's just go with that because that's something I can compare easily between the two. All right, uh, I have here. Clad, uh, all all of the denominations have a uh, quarter, penny, nickel, dime. So uh, let's go uh, let's go from bottom to the top this time, and I'm going to go penny, and let's see where I lose the actual audio here. Okay, two inches, four inches, six inches. Seven inches. That's pretty clear at eight inches. I can get it begins to break up at nine, but it is still pretty consistent. So let's go to ten inch. I can get some at ten. So back up at nine. Back up at eight. Probably the deepest I can get is nine inches on my air test here uh, with a penny on the M6. Okay, let's go nickel. Okay, I'm back six, seven inches, eight inches, still solid. Nine inch, considerably better than a penny, so it's still pretty solid. Ten inches. It begins to die at about eleven inches, which is the end of the typing sheet here. So let's put it about here for the uh, nickel. Let's go dime. Okay. That's nine inches, about where the penny is. Ten inches, I'm getting something, but not that much. So I'll put it about nine with the penny, maybe a little further, not much. And let's go with the big one, the quarter. And let's see if we can, see how far it'll go. The other one's solid at nine. Relatively solid at 10. Almost nothing at 11. So let's give it a little bit further than the nickel. So that's the uh, basic uh, layout of the terminating uh, signal for each one of those uh, coins. You know, and once again, people jump on me when I do these sometimes. But I always do it as a comparison. This time I'm doing a comparison of the same manufacturer's machine and probably the same or like technology. Now I'm, I'm going to use the stock coil on each because that's the only way it would make it fair. But so I'm going to be using the, the spider coil of the uh, MX-5 and I'm using uh, what I like to call a dinner plate coil of the M6. So that may give the M6 an advantage. Uh, we'll have to see, but that's what I've got there. So 
that is nine, ten. Nine and ten is about what we've got on all of those coins. So let me switch this off, and then I'm going to move in the uh, the uh, MX5. Okay, uh, we now have the the MX5 here, and we're going to be using, of course, the uh, the uh, I don't know, call it a, sort of a spider coil with the MX5. Sorry for the close view, but it's a pain in the butt to to take the zoom off in order to fix this. And I've got it about right, so at least it's visible. So I'm going to lay the MX5 down here at one at the edge of the typing sheet, which will be about one inches. Okay, and then I'm going to remove the coins I've already got here, and then I'm going to redo my test. All right, on the MX5. Of course, it's digital, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to to tune up than the uh, than the uh, analog M6. So I'm just going to initially just switch on the power. All right, I've got a little bit of noise there, which is not surprising. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to attempt to. To raise the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to raise it one notch from the top because it makes it a little bit more stable. So you can't really do like and like against two machines of different design. So that's where I've got is, and I've got discrimination. I turned discrimination all the way down. I didn't mention that on the. Uh, on the uh, uh, M6. So what I need to do is the same up here. I'm gonna, I'm not going to all metal. But I'm going to make sure that all of the discrimination points are active. Sorry, I had a little discrimination here to get rid of foil. So I've got to do this manually one segment at a time. And there we go. Now all of the discrimination segments are active. So that's the lowest level of discrimination I can get. And this is a little bit noisier. So for whatever reason, maybe the coil is a little bit more responsive to the EMI in this room. So let me just tone it up a little bit. All right, here we go. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. And I'm going into... Reverse the nomination order. Going first with the penny. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Still a pretty good signal at nine. Ten. It's pretty close. Put about nine and a half with the penny. Okay, here we go with a nickel. I'm gonna start at six, go to seven, go to eight, go to nine, still solid, go to ten. Still, still pretty repeatable. Go to eleven. It dies. So about like here with the uh, nickel. Go dime. Here we go dime. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Got a little bit. Now uh, let's put it about nine. And here we go. The big boy. Or like we like we like to call it in detecting big money. We're going to go with a clad quarter. All of these are clad and or zinc. Here we go. Okay. Seven. Eight. Nine. By the way, I'm still getting a sharp signal with the dime, with the quarter, so it's still... Okay, now it begins to fade. A ten. So about a little bit past ten. So... That's the that's a very equal equal position there. 
Now, we've also got to put the caveat here. I am using different coils, but I'm using the stock coil that comes available with each. So that's the basis of my test. Uh, when I get a coil uh, that's independent, they both use the same coil. That's the same on each. Uh, I'm going to get an elliptical coil, probably was it a 6x10. Then I'll be able to test it in more of a like version with the coil itself. But this is basically the test we've got here out of the box. This is, the, this, this is, this is the, the, the layout of the various coins. And in my opinion, I'm doing this from memory and I'll look at the, the, the uh, recording later. That is a little bit deeper on some of the high conductivity coins and the nickel, which is not high conductivity, than it was on the M6. But we'll have to uh, see that later. So that's the first start uh, is uh, uh, my first comparison test. So and I'm also going to do probably a target separation test. And then I'm going to post this. And then I'm going to uh, put my hands over my head and get ready for the beating. And remember, please, this is a comparative test. I'm not saying that out in the field these machines wouldn't be deeper or even less deep than what is showing here. I'm only doing a like to like comparison between two similar machines, two similar technologies in the same environment, uh, an environment inside with EMI. So this is only a comparison of like in a like environment and not an absolute measure of depth. So people who say you got 13 inches off of a quarter with the M6 or with the MX5, I can't argue with you because I haven't, got, I haven't gone that deep out in the field if it goes that deep. All right, so uh, we'll step, we'll finish this off probably with the target separation test, but that's a good start. So.